Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial where we will be drawing a horse eye in pastels. This will be a much shorter lesson than the wolf lesson that was quite intensive so I wanted to make sure that this tutorial was a nice short one that could be done in one day. This tutorial will also be a variation on painting black fur. We painted black fur in that cat earlier this month and this will be similar but just a little bit different and this will show you how you can use different colors in painting black fur instead of just always using blue and mauves. My working surface is six by six inches so to get this I measured out a six and a half square inch piece of Clairefontaine pastel mat and I cut it at six and a half inches all around and to get my six inches inside I tape off the excess this way I'm left with only six by six inches to work with and this way I have a nice square piece. I always do my drawing on a separate piece of paper and then transfer it onto the pastel mat using graphite paper. I never just freehand it directly on the pastel mat because erasing and all that stuff will just make a mess. So I'd rather do that on paper and then just transfer everything over onto pastel mat. And this way you have no mess on your paper. You just have a nice clean drawing and you start from scratch. I'm going to do my work starting from the left of my paper and work my way down to the right. And to start I'm just using a black pastel pencil and I'm just filling in the far left with some black and then I will start working on the halter. And the halter is very blurred in this reference photo so I'm going to make it nice and soft. I'm going to layer a base color and then I will be building light. And I'm just going to complete this little section here before we can continue on to the halter. just going to take this pastel that I've just laid down and I'm going to push it into the pastel mat. And now I'm going to take a brown pencil and I'm just going to roughly pencil in or just even scribble in some brown on top of the black just so it's not straight up black. And this is where um, we see how painting black doesn't always require blue or mauves or purples. There will be some blue used later on in this piece but there will also be brown. When you look at the reference photo there's a lot of brown so black is not always done by using blues and mauves. So just keep this in mind whenever you're painting anything black in the future. I also wanted to experiment with my black by using this plum color. It's not really necessary. Just using a brown is fine. I just wanted to see what kind of um, interesting nuances it would give me in my black hairs. But it was fine with just the brown. So I'm not going to be using it later on in the painting. I'll use it for a little bit at first, but not really afterwards. Now I'm going to start blocking in my, um, my halter. And this is a leather halter. If it was more in focus, I would pay more attention to giving a lesson on leather but it's really out of focus so it's basically going to be just blocking in with a, um, a solid color such as this gray and then adding some highlights. So basically all of my leather will be blocked in using a dark gray and then I'll be building lighter layers where light is reflecting onto the, um, the halter. And I'm also using navy blue around a lot of the edges and this helped to give me a lot of depth and dimension and more of a 3D effect rather than just having straight up flat gray. So just to make the, the leather really look um, realistic this bit of navy blue really helps. And now I'm going to take out a light gray pencil and I'm going to start penciling in some light. And it's this light that's going to help make our, our um, halter come to life. I keep wanting to say harness, thinking of my dog harness, but this is not, not a harness, it's a halter. And once I've got that down, I'm not afraid to push it in and really rub it. It doesn't matter if it goes past the lines because everything's going to be soft and blurred and out of focus. So I'm not worried about going past the lines in this situation. 
it's quite okay to soften everything and make it blurry all around the edges. That's really what we want. And this is what is going to help us have that out of focus look. And this will make our eye the main focal point. And I'm just making a little bit of adjustments with my black as I go along. Now again, with my black pastel pencil, I'm just going to start outlining the halter. I don't want to lose my drawing. And we're just going to fill in our little black areas. And I mentioned in a previous video how I'm working flat for the recording. If I was not recording, I would have my work up on an easel. It's much easier for you guys if you're working and looking straight up at the easel at your work instead of having it flat. Things can become distorted when you're working flat like this, so it's important to pay attention. And it's just a lot easier to work and to be able to see your work clearly when everything's up on an easel. So if you can, do work with your paper up on an easel, maybe with a board in the back to make your paper solid so you're not afraid of pushing on your paper and your paper will have support. It's just so much easier to be working on an easel. It's just for recording purposes. If I have it up on an easel, I have to record at a strange angle so that my hand can fit between the camera and the paper. And it's just very awkward and it kind of makes my recording skewed. So when I'm painting with pastels and recording, I just like to keep everything flat and that way I have enough distance between the camera and the paper and my hand and pencils can fit in there nicely. I would also advise to keep a sheet of glassine paper in between your hand and the pastel mat or whatever surface you're working on, whether that be sanded paper or anything else. The glassine will prevent the um, the body oils on your hand and arm from transferring onto the paper. A lot of people I talk to have a hard time with their paper and they wonder why pastels just won't stick in certain areas. They get what's called hot spots and they'll just be tiny little sections where the pastel just won't stick or you'll apply one layer, one layer and nothing else goes on. And very often this is why it's because we get a transfer of body oils from our hand or our skin onto the paper. So to avoid this, use a glassine sheet and um, the glassine also prevents smudging of pastels. This is another issue that a lot of people don't like about pastels is they feel that everything just smudges around as they work. If you have glassine on your hand, you're not going to have this issue. The glassine does not smudge your work. So you're actually able to lay it on top of something that you've already worked on actually and it's still not going to smudge it. So do use glassine. I highly recommend it. You can get it from a craft store or an art store. And when you order Clairefoy 10 pastel mat, each sheet of pastel mat always comes with a sheet of glassine. You can either cut off a piece of glassine or use a sheet. I'm using a sheet here and I've got it folded in half. And this will last me through several paintings. When it gets too dirty on one side, I'll flip it and wipe off um, the dirty part or I'll just fold it in half or the other direction. I'll fold it the other way and it'll last me through several paintings. If you don't have any glassine, you can use a, um, a sheet of acid-free paper from a sketch pad and just lay it on your work. This might have a little bit of smudging if you move it around. So if you do that, try to not move that sheet around. And so now I've just got my navy blue pencil again and I'm just going to pencil some in, especially around the edges. I want to make sure I have nice navy blue outlines and this will help with our depth. It's kind of like a softening of the dark edges. You have the black and if you just leave black with um, a hard edge of gray, it doesn't look right. It looks flat. So by adding that navy blue, just in little sections, especially around the edges, it kind of helps with that nice smooth transition between the blacks and the colors. And now I'm going to block in using a light gray pencil. You could go in with a darker gray, 
or a mid-tone gray. I will go in after with the, um, the darker gray again, but it's just a blocking in so it's okay. And now I'm adding a little bit of the darker gray on the bottom here and I'm pushing it in and you see how we're already getting a little bit of form now just in that straight piece of leather just by adding in that little pop of darkness on the bottom we're seeing the curvature so this is how you can manipulate dark colors and light colors to um, give you shape and form inside of objects you could use that to your advantage to create curvature in various things whether it's a straight piece of leather like this or a rounded vase, you can use dark colors and light colors to give yourself form and shape. And now I'm adding a lighter color up on top and we're going to see even more curvature in our straight piece of leather. And I'm really pushing down with my finger, just really pushing that pastel into the paper. And you can use either light gray or light blue. If you use just grays, you might end up with a flat looking painting. So it's nice to, um, to vary your tones a bit and not just always use gray, even though we're creating basically a gray looking um, halter we still want to use some blues here and there it'll just give more life and it won't look as flat just sticking with grays might make things look a little bit lifeless so whenever you're painting something that's gray try and really pay attention to what colors that you see within that gray object and if you can use other colors such as blues or mauves do that and it'll just give more life to your pieces and now I've got a navy blue pencil again and I'm just going around the edges and this is just adding more dimension to my halter. And I'm just penciling it around the little black hole also, the belt um, or the buckle hole. And you see how I added a bit of white pencil around that hole, how just by doing that, you get the sense that the buckle has gone through that hole before and it's slightly elevated. Just by using a lighter colored pencil, we added light and it looks like it's sticking out more as compared to the rest of that strip of leather. And I'm just refining and cleaning my lines with my black pencil again. And I'm adding a little bit of navy blue again to add more life and dimension to what I've just worked on. I don't want just black and gray. I want it to look a lot more natural. I want to continue outlining everything in black. Once I've got everything outlined in black, then everything is easier to pencil. It could get a little bit trickier at the bottom. So make sure you have a good drawing transferred and that you understand it. And by understand it, I mean understand exactly what it is that you're supposed to draw in there. And I'm just going to continue penciling in some of the blue and blending everything, softening everything up as I go.
and I'm just going to block in that bit with my light gray pencil. And I'm going to extend some of this lighter color up on top, just building up my lights. And I'm just making adjustments to the curvature in the leather in this section. Kind of curves right where it's going through the little buckle. So at the deepest part of the curve, it needs to be darker than that. As, as it goes up, it would pick up the light. So this is why I added just a little bit of light. And now I'm going to start penciling in the metal, the metallic buckle. And I'm just using light gray. You can also use light blue. And I'm just going to outline it. On the inside of the buckle, um, it's kind of an off color because of the colors being reflected. So I'm going to start off with a little bit of brown. Then I'll lighten that up afterwards. And I'm going to go over this with some blue. And it's just giving me more of an interesting gray. And I'm just trying to approximate the color. I keep looking over at my reference photo, making sure I try and get everything down accurately. If I don't get this accurate, um, horse people would know that right away. Horse people pick up on the slightest detail and they will let you know if something's off or not done well. They're not afraid of telling you. And again, I'm just outlining everything in black before I start filling in with color. Now I'm just going to highlight using white. Our buckle here is relatively small, so it's a little difficult trying to squeeze in a lot of detail in such a small space. So we're just going to limit our detail. I'm just going to keep it light on top with my little shadowed area with reflective light on the bottom. There's not enough room. If this was a painting, using paint brushes, I could use a very fine brush. But even with pastel pencils and a fine point, it's still a little bit more difficult squeezing in tiny details in really small, tight spots. And this little part here is just a little strap. And I'm making sure to mark down my shadow in black. I normally don't paint shadows using black, just very rare times. This is one of those times. But I am having the navy blue mixed in with it, so it's not just going to be pure black by the time the painting's done. And just like the other little bit of strap that we did up on top, I'm making sure I have my shadow underneath the little strap. The light is coming from up above, so we need to see that shadow below the strap, not above. Now I've got a light blue pencil and I'm just adding a little bit of light 
on the leather strap that is going straight down and it's going inside of that other little strap I just outlined and so because it's sticking out a little bit more we're going to add some light on top. Looking at this halter it could look somewhat like a puzzle and it could be a little bit confusing to start but just try and look at um, your references whenever you're working on something like this. Try and see what is sticking out more and whatever is sticking out more should be picking up more light than things that are recessed. With my lighter blue color I'm just going to outline the very edge of that little piece of strap because again it's picking up more light than the bottom part would be so we need to make sure we have that bit of light in there and I'm just blocking in the rest with my darker gray and I'm pushing this down deep. Whenever you see me using a lighter colored pencil on this um, halter, it's because I'm adding light. So think of this in terms of light and shadow. Now my light has to follow the curve of this little bit of strap or bit of leather. So I need to make sure that it makes sense to the viewer. So I curve my marks downwards and this way I'm adding curvature to my strap. And I'm going to make it darker on the right side, which should logically be more in the shadowed area. So I'm using some navy blue here. And see how we have form now? We see curvature in this bit of strap. If we just have one solid color straight across, you wouldn't be able to make out any form or any curvature. But just by playing with dark colors and light colors, and understanding light and shadow, we've just added curve to this little um, section that would normally otherwise just look like a straight line. I'm going to play with a little bit more blue. This is a mid-tone blue and again this is just helping me add more form to um, these little shapes. And that's how we have to view something like this where it's confusing and puzzling. There are lots of little bits just break them down into small shapes and objects and lines and just think of it in those terms just shapes and colors make out the shapes outline the shapes fill in with color build your light build your shadows if you could break little parts down this way then the puzzle starts getting just a little bit simpler I like to compare it to uh, something in real life like setting goals for example. Whenever you set goals you have to break them down into small manageable parts. Well art is very much the same way. Just look at your painting and break everything down into small manageable parts and just work those one at a time and it's a lot less confusing this way. And that's what I'm doing right now here. It gets a little puzzling at this point so I'm just trying to break everything down into shapes and colors and just I just want to lay stuff down at this point and try and make sense of my shadows and dark areas so I'm just going to outline everything fill in with color and as I start laying down stuff it starts making a little bit more sense and then once everything is blocked in then I could start working on detail. At this point I'm still a little bit confused so I'm checking out my reference really closely and just trying to gauge everything out before I start laying down color. I want to make sure I'm not laying down black where I should be laying down a very light color like a light blue or like uh, a bright white. So I'm just taking my time and trying to gauge everything out before I start laying down color. And you see on the bottom part of the strap under the buckle there are two little holes there. Those are the holes for the buckle. I'm also using those as a guide. They kind of help me know where to lay things down. 
So for example, I would look at that second hole on the bottom and just let my eye travel straight down to the right, straight across. And then I would kind of know what needs to go there. It helps me understand what goes next. That applies to whatever you're painting. Always look at what you've already painted or drawn onto your canvas or your paper if you're confused and use something as a marker. And what you could do is let's say take your paintbrush or your pencil, lay it across your reference photo and then just go over to your work and lay it across that same spot. And it should help guide you as to what goes where and if you need to go up or down or straight. I hope I'm making sense. Um, maybe I'll demonstrate that in another pencil exactly what I mean by, by showing you. It's kind of like sight size. You would take your pencil or your paintbrush and just hold it up to the screen and that helps you determine where things should go. And then you would move that pencil over to your canvas and just follow exactly what you looked at on your reference and that should help guide you as to where you need to lay things down. I hope that made sense. I'm very French so sometimes I am uh, looking for words when I'm trying to properly explain something. So. If you didn't understand, let me know. And now I'm going to fill in the rest of this strap with a dark gray, just laying down my base color or blocking in. And I'm going to fix my holes so I don't lose them. Now that we've got our base color in, we could start laying down a little bit of light and detail. And again, I'm going to pencil in some navy blue around the edges. And I'm also using it to create that little seam inside where there's stitching. And using the navy blue just makes everything look richer and a little bit more realistic and less flat. And now with the black, I'm just adding just little marks just to um, suggest stitching. adjusting my shadow and now I'm extending my shadow down with the navy blue. Because I'm using the navy blue with the black for the shadows, my shadows are a lot nicer than if I would just use straight up black and not mix it with any other color. My shadows don't look flat. And this is more of a mid-tone blue, like a cobalt blue. Again, this is just adding another layer of richness. Now that I'm penciling in this blue, you could start making sense of this now. It's starting to look like the edges of other straps. And now I'm just making tiny little dots, again, just suggesting stitching. Now with my white pencil, I'm going to start adding just a little bit more light in certain sections. And now with the light blue pencil, what I'm doing is I'm making little, um, little lines. I'm not making them perfectly straight. I'm making them crooked and they will be slanting downwards as I go. 
and these are to suggest little wrinkles and folds in the leather. Leather rarely stays straight for a long time. Once it's broken in, it kind of gets crinkly and wrinkled. And this is what I'm penciling in right now. And I'll be adding little darker shadows too. So I'm just going to build those up. I don't want to neglect adding the light that falls on the edges of the strap. So this is what I'm laying down here with a light blue pencil. And I'm just correcting my darker values here. I want to make sure we didn't lose them by putting down too much of the lighter color. And now I'm pretty much done with my straps or the uh, halter and I'm going to start laying down some color and start blocking in the horse itself and we'll start laying down some color. So there's a lighter section up on top of the head here and I'm just going in with some brown and a bit of that plum. But the plum color is not necessary. Like I said earlier, I was just kind of feeling my way around trying to replicate the color that I see or that I saw on my monitor. But it's not necessary. If you just use brown, you'll be fine. Sometimes you just use what you have and it works. And so I'm just penciling in some black. Now with my black pencil again, I'm just going to start marking in some of my creases in um, darker areas. I don't want to lose those by working on something else. So I just want to get these penciled in before I continue with anything else. These folds directly above a horse's eye are typically always the same in every horse. So really study horse eyes and pay attention to all those little creases. You want to make sure you make them realistic and have them curving in the proper direction. So they're usually pretty much um, sim always similar in all horses that you will paint. So get to know a horse's eye really well and it should get easier and easier every time you do them. Now that it's a bit of a larger area, I'm going to start using some pen pastels just to lay down a nice base coat. I just keep blocking in everything and I'm just using black. 
If you don't have pan pastels, you can either use your pastel pencils, although you'll be scribbling a lot more in larger areas, or even better, just take out a black pastel stick and just block in with a pastel stick. Just try and make sure you put down a thin application that you'll be able to work on top of. And I just want to block in my darkest areas first before I could start detailing anything. You can still see the lines I applied previously underneath. I'm not putting the pen pastels down so thick that I'm completely covering my lines. So if you're going to use the pen pastels, do be careful put down just a thin application so you're not covering up the markings that you previously made. And now I'm taking my brown pencil out again and I'm just going to start roughly scribbling some brown. And I'm not really concerned about detail at this point. I'm just getting some color down and just scribbling. And now I'm taking a dark gray pencil, and this is a cool gray, and I'm going to start adding some of this on top of the brown I've just laid down. This is a part of the forehead that protrudes a little bit, so we want to make sure that we show that there's actually light being um, reflected on this part. And when I lay down the gray, I push it in, and this blends it with the brown and the black. And it just creates the perfect balance of color that I'm looking for. I'm also starting to suggest hair that's growing. So I'm following the direction that the hair would be growing in. And this is why I'm just laying down these strokes on an angle. Now I'm taking a warm gray that's just one shade lighter than the gray I previously laid down. And I'm just going to repeat the process. And this is just adding even more light. wanted to mention too that working with black this way is very messy and you will get dirty fingers so what I do is I keep a package of baby wipes in the studio and they're just fabulous for cleaning pastels off your fingers then when I really need to wash my hands I just go in the bathroom and use bar soap and I find bar soap washes pastels off the hands a lot better than liquid soap Now here, even though this is just a tiny little section in the corner that's not really noticeable, I still want to make sure I get the direction that the hair is growing in right. Otherwise, it's not going to look right and somebody might spot that. So I just want to make sure that I get this down right. If you want your paintings to look professional, literally do not cut corners. Make sure that you complete your paintings all the way through to the corners and all of the edges. Otherwise, it's not going to look complete. And now I'm going to take my black pencil and I'm just starting to scribble in some black. Again, following the direction that the hair is growing in. And now I'm going to start marking in again with my block some of the other um, lines from my sketching. 
just little markers I don't want to lose as I work. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark them down with some black right away. Now this part of the lower lid protrudes out like just a little bit more than the rest of the lower lid. And because of this, it's in a shadowed area and it's really black. So I'm just really going to lay down the black really thickly in this area. Now I'm going to pencil in a little bit of brown in this section where light will be hitting. I'm just lightening things up and I'm starting this by laying down a, a brown base. And now I'm using a navy blue pencil again and just penciling this in. This eventually will be lightened up and we will be penciling in some reflected light in this area later. So right now I'm just laying down my base layer still and I'm still not focusing on any detail at all. I could still see my marks here that I've previously laid down even though I'm going on top over top of them with the pan pastels. I'm just laying down a very thin application of the pan pastels. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but I'm just th thickening up my black and adjusting my lines here as well. These creases will be very important later, so we want to make sure that we don't lose our placement. This little black section on the upper lid is a shadowed area, so it's a lot blacker than the rest of the upper lid. I want to make sure I get a really good black base layer down before I can start adding on any other layers of color. And now I'm going to start adding in a little bit of my dark gray. So it's a very dark gray, but it's still lighter than the black. And this is still just a base layer. So again, I'm not focused on details at this point. I'm just laying down color before I could start layering my details. And I'm still doing the same thing, only this time now with a navy blue pencil.
now I'm taking a dark brown pencil and in the direction that the hair is growing in, I'm just going to start adding in some lines. And later when I start adding lighter colors on top of this, it's really going to make a, a beautiful and interesting black. And now this section here will have more light reflected on it. So I'm just going in with a, um, a gray. Eventually it'll all come together. It'll make more sense. But for now, at the blocking in stage, it's still looking rather rough and crude. But that's okay. And now that I'm satisfied with my base layer in this section, I'm taking my brown pencil and I'm going to start penciling in some hairs and I'm making sure that I'm following the direction that the hair is growing in. So I'm just starting to be a little bit more careful about my strokes now at this point. I am pushing this in deep into the pastel mat. The strokes still show a little bit. It's a little bit more blurred, but they still show. Now on this section of the eyelid, the hair is like velvet. It's very, very short, tiny hairs. You barely can see in the hair itself. So I'm just tapping in little dots using a dark gray pencil. And now I'm going to take out this lighter blue and this is just to show light being reflected on this part of the lid. And now I'm going to add yet another layer of light and so I'm just using my warm gray for this and just penciling in tiny little strokes to suggest hairs. And this is starting to add little bits of highlight to what we've already drawn in. And now I'm ready to begin penciling in some hairs on this top lid. So this part is protruding outwards, so it will be picking up more light and will be lightening up as we go along. And I'm making sure that I'm following the, um, the shape of the lid as well. So it's a nice curved shape and I'm making sure from beginning to end that I follow along that curve and my hairs will follow that shape. And I'm just going to block in this section now using again the same darker gray pencil. Now with my navy blue pencil, I'm going to start softening the edge.
And now with the same gray pencil, I'm going to start penciling in a few hairs and making sure I keep my strokes short. And I'm just going to start filling in where I need it. And back in with my black pencil here, I want to make sure I don't lose my creases. And now here I want to softly extend this black upwards and now I'm blending it in and this is just creating more of a gradual um, a gradual change between the dark and the light. I'm going to add some blue. This way it's not just a solid black line. We don't want just a solid black line in that section because there is a gradual shadow that you see before you get in the actual crease. So you want to make sure to depict that properly and not just to have um, a hard black line. Now with a lighter gray pencil, I'm starting to add a little bit of light that's being reflected on these parts of the lid. And now I'm just going to continue building up some hairs following the direction they're growing in and then using my darker gray pencil. This section is in a shadowed area, so I'm just going to keep building up my blacks and make sure it's really nice and dark here. Because it's a shadowed area here, if I keep it really nice and dark, it's going to make a really beautiful contrast between the upper lid, which will be very much highlighted by the time we're done. And um, it's going to have a nice contrast between the upper lid and the shadowed area. And this is what we want. We want to create that range of values. And now with um, mid-tone blue, I'm going to start penciling in some more hairs. And again, following the direction. And this will add more interest to the overall painting. 
repeat now what I say in all my videos. Whenever you're working on a painting, never use just a couple of colors. You want, always want to have a minimum of three colors in any one section that you're working on. And the reason for this is if you just stick to two colors in one section, let's say this upper lid, I only stuck with gray and black. I would have a pretty flat looking painting at the end. I might get away with making it okay, but it wouldn't be beautiful. It wouldn't be right. You would not have as much depth as what we're going to have by the time we're done. So by using a minimum of three colors in any one section, you create depth and you create more realism and you create interest. And it's just more visually appealing to anyone who's looking at a painting. Even though I blend my colors in a lot of sections, I make sure that I don't over blend. The key is you want to layer. You don't want to over blend and then end up making mud. So you just want to layer all these colors so that when you're looking at it, you still see some of the other colors underneath showing through. And now I'm penciling in yet another layer of lighter colored hairs using a lighter blue pencil. I'm also trying to make sure I don't completely cover up my creases here and I will adjust as I go along. You want to make sure those creases remain visible. And now I'm going to repeat this process using just a little bit of brown. And now again with my warm gray. And I'm adding more bits of highlight to these parts of the lid. And now again to my brown, I often alternate back and forth between colors, just applying them as I need them. And I've got some more black here. I 
and I'm just going to roughly pencil in this black, just getting a base layer down. I have a mid-tone blue pencil here and I'm going to start laying down some more color and I'll also be going in this area with a darker gray pencil. With my black pencil here, I'm just going to start filling in some black. Before I continue detailing, I still want to keep blocking in somewhat. I'm going to keep working at these creases, just refining them and detailing them again a little bit more with the black. And now I'm looking back and forth between my drawing and my reference photo and I'm just trying to gauge out where I'm going to start adding highlights on top of those fleshy parts. And by adding in these highlights it's also accentuating the creases. And now I'm just tapping with my mid-tone blue pencil. The hairs here are very, very short, but not only does the horse have very short hairs around the eye, he also has sand, so I'm kind of just making little nicks everywhere. And it's helping me paint in the little hairs as well, as well as the sand that's sitting on top. So just by tapping my pencil like this, I'm adding texture also. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a darker gray pencil. And this is adding a third color.
And now with my lighter blue pencil, I'm going to add another layer on top of the lids. And this time, just tiny, tiny little hairs. They're very small, so just make short strokes. I'm barely touching the paper. I don't want to push too hard. I'll end up with a line that's too thick. I'm just going to keep going down until I get to the end. And we're now starting to have a lot more contrast when you consider the black shadows up against the lit areas. We have beautiful contrast now. So this is helping to create a more realistic piece as well as a more dramatic piece. Light in a painting is always more important than detail, in my opinion. Um, you can have super accurate detail and still have a very boring painting. So it's important to learn how to depict light and have proper values and contrast, as well as painting atmosphere. Now I'm just going to add more bits of light on the top part of the brow. I'm making sure as I go around that I'm following the direction that the hair is growing in. And so these little hairs are going to start extending upwards as they go up towards the forehead. And now I'm adding just a bit more light here. And this is a great study to show how you don't need whites to build light all the time. You can use a lot of colors to depict light without having to use any white at all. And now we're finally going to start working on the best part, which is the eye. And I just have my dark gray pencil here and I'm going to start laying down some gray. Eyelashes will be sitting on top of this. So this isn't really the eye yet. And now this is the top part of the eye and I'm going to start outlining it in black. Normally when I work on animals, I tend to usually want to start with the eyes first, but this time I just waited a little bit longer just to um, get rid of all those details around so that they would be done and then I could just jump into the eye. I just want to block some main parts in right now. 
and these will serve as guides so I'll have a better um, better indication as to what to do after once certain parts are blocked in everything else becomes a little bit easier I keep looking over at my reference photo and I'm just trying to picture where all the highlighted parts will be. I just want to visualize everything just so that mentally I know what I'll have to do once I get to those sections in order to complete them. And now I'm going to pencil in some blue inside the eye. And this is the sky that is being reflected. And we have mountains also. And there's also a couple of people being reflected. So these will all be penciled in. And it might seem um, a little intimidating at first, but it's quite simple. All it is is don't think that you're painting an eye. Just consider this as you're painting shapes and colors inside another shape so the shape is kind of a funny oval shape and inside of that shape we'll be adding different colors in different patterns and shapes and once everything's put in together then you'll stand back and you see that you have a whole eye that's been painted so don't focus on thinking this is an eye that I'm painting and there are reflections in the eyes and I'm not sure how to go about it just break everything down into lines and shapes and colors. It's like I was saying earlier about goals and breaking everything down into manageable parts. Well, it's the same thing with a painting. Just break it down into little sections and just ask yourself, what color do I need to add in this section and what shape will that color be painted or drawn in? And this is how we can learn to see with artists' eyes. And now I'm penciling in a tiny little person. It's just a silhouette. Don't worry about getting it accurately because it is a reflection. So there are absolutely no details. We are just suggesting something here. So this is the person obviously that was taking the photo. And behind that person, there will be another person standing there. But it's just tiny little shapes. And I'm outlining the top of those mountains with black. I'm just going to pencil that in and keep outlining it. And now I'm going to start penciling in some brown inside the mountains. And I'm going to want the top of those mountains where the black is. I want that black to kind of blend in with the brown so I have a smooth transition between the black and the brown. So I'm just going to pencil in the brown. And I'll come back in later and add more black. Just little jagged shapes sticking out of that mountain range. I'm assuming it's a mountain range. So maybe those are trees. I'm not sure. And now with that same dark brown pencil, I'm going to start adding some of that brown on the bottom of the eye. As with all landscapes, even inside an eye reflection, um, 
as the foreground gets closer to you, it gets darker and darker. So whatever is in the foreground should be dark. And as things get further in the background, they get lighter. And so we'll see after how the, um, the ground will be lighter than the foreground. And now I just penciled in a base layer with a reddish brown pencil. And now with my baby finger, I'm just going to push the pastel down into the pastel mat without ruining what I've just drawn in. Now I'm going to take some navy blue and I'm going to add some all around our little person here. There seems to be a shadow on the ground. Maybe it's a passing cloud that's just casting a shadow. And I changed blue pencils. I went for a mid-tone blue instead. And now I'm going to lighten things up with an even lighter blue pencil. And now I'm just going to make some adjustments with my black pencil. And I'm going to continue outlining the eye with black. And I'm just going to keep going all the way around. And now without using too much pressure, I want to start extending the black upwards. Just kind of blend it gently into the brown. And I'm just making little adjustments to my blue here with my navy blue Caran d'Ache pencil. And now I'm going to start filling in a little bit of the darker color just to um, blend them from the mountain range downwards. I'm trying to have a range of values here even though it's inside the eye. I want a bit of a play between lights and darks.
I'm losing my person here, but that's okay. I'll just adjust that after. And now I'm just going to fix my person. Make sure that we could see them again. So I'm just going to pencil it in with black. And now using a light blue pencil, I'm just placing a couple of tiny little marks and these are adding a highlight on my person. And just like that, we have values. And now I'm gonna pencil in a second little person standing behind the first person. And that's it, just a little pop of black. I'm gonna adjust the ground around that. And now I'm going to pencil in some little lines that are on the ground. And I have to curve these lines because we're looking inside an eye. Whatever is being reflected in the eye will also take on the shape of the eye. So our eye is round, so our shapes are going to curve as well. That's why our mountain range kind of lo looks um, askew and so do our people. Their shapes are distorted. They're not shaped the same way they would be if you were looking at them in person but because the eye is rounded, everything will be off kilter, so to speak. And now with a mid-tone blue pencil, I'm going to start outlining part of the lower lid. It's wet, so it's picking up light and reflecting it back. So we need to show that by adding lighter colors. In case you're wondering about that bunch of pencils, that was just my hand that went in front of the camera. It means nothing. I was just holding a bunch of pencils, as I usually do when I'm working. Now in this section of the lower lid, I'm just adding just little bits, just tiny little marks. It's not one straight line going down and it shows like a break in the reflections. So you don't want just one blue solid line going across. You want to break that line as you get closer to the inner corner. And now for the fleshy part, I'm using a burnt sienna pencil or a reddish brown pencil. And that's it. I just put in one little line like this. And now with a darker gray, again, I'm showing reflection. And I'm doing that by using the darker gray pencil. And now with an even lighter gray pencil, I'm going to just dab on more little bits of light. And now our eyes starting to look a little bit more wet inside. And I'm going to do the same here and I'm using a very light pressure.
and just a few little dots as I go towards the inner corner. And now I just want to darken the line here. And now I can start working on the other part of the lower lid. And in the inner corner here, I'm just going to gently tap it. I'm just lightly tapping, just starting to add subtle bits of light. And now I'm going to extend it to the outer corner of the eye. I'm not penciling in a straight line here. I'm making sure that my line is jagged and uneven. The light is not being reflected evenly straight across. So I want to make sure I accurately depict this. If I were to just draw in a very straight line across or an even line, it would not look natural. And now I'm going to add my third layer using a light blue pencil. And once again, I'm just going to repeat the same process. I'm just going to gently tap in some dots. I'm not having um, a heavy pressure while I'm doing this. And again, I want uneven light. So I'm just going to randomly add little bits of light going across. And now that that part is done, I could start working on the rest of the horse, including this part of the lower lid. So I'm just adding a reddish brown. And I'm going to pencil in some bits of dark gray. Just trying to simulate tiny little hairs. And I'm just placing these randomly. I don't want anything to be uniform. And I'm just going to correct my values here, adding a little bit more black. And this will just add to the contrast where light is reflecting on the lower lid. And now I'm just penciling in tiny little black lines, simulating hairs. Just correcting my tones.
and I zoom back out as I'm going to continue working on the lower part of our horse now. And I'm just going to pencil in some black. And I took out a Rembrandt pastel pencil here, or sorry, pastel stick, just to um, make my black darker. I wanted it really black, especially in the lower corner. So now that I've got that in, I could take out my pans and just uh, fill in the rest and apply a thinner layer. And I'm just going to push that in with my finger and making sure I have a nice, thin, even layer. And I'm just going to make some adjustments in this section of the inner corner. Just making sure I pick up some highlights and I'm using my dark gray pencil. And I'm going to start working our way down. There's just a little patch here going down on an angle and this is picking up light so I'm just penciling in some dark gray hairs and blending them in. I'm just softening them up. And I'm just going to continue penciling in little hairs. I don't want too much detail on the way out because I want it darker in order to keep our value range. But I still want to suggest hairs. And with my black pencil, I just want to darken my shadow area again. A little speck of white pastel fell onto the paper here and it wouldn't wipe off so I just covered it up with black and blended it back in. And now I'm going to start building another layer using navy blue. And this is going to help give us a nice sheen to the hair. And I'm making downward strokes. I'm making sure to follow the direction that the hair is growing in. And I'm going to speed this up just a little bit until we get to the next color. And as with most animal paintings, as I get closer to the inner corner, my hairs get shorter and shorter. So my strokes are just going to be short little strokes.
Just by adding in this dark blue layer now, we can already see how much more beautiful this black horse's fur is looking. If it was just painted in straight black and nothing else, it would look really flat and lifeless. But just by adding this blue, it, it's taking on a really nice shimmer. So this is why you never want to paint your black fur just solid straight black. You always want to incorporate other colors. And in this painting, we're incorporating blues, grays, and browns. And now we want to start detailing this elevated fleshy part. And again, I'm going to pencil in some brown. And I'm making tiny little strokes. And now with my gray pencil, I'm just going to start penciling in some uneven bumps that I see on the fleshy part. And it's on these, um, these little gray parts that you see whiskers growing from. So I want to make sure I add these in and then I'll blend them and smooth them out. And now I'm going to start penciling in yet another layer of fur, reflecting back even more light. With this lighter layer, I want to make sure I'm not applying it everywhere. I do not want to extend it down to the halter. I just want it in certain sections, just where light is being reflected and nowhere else. And now I'm going to do the same thing with a brown pencil again, just in random sections. I don't want it everywhere. Now I want to start tapping in some dots with my dark gray pencil. There's sand on the horse's face. And that's what these little dots are going to be, just little specks of sand. And I'm also going to pencil in some more tiny little hairs, again following the direction they're growing in. I'm using very gentle pressure here. Again, if I apply too much pressure, my marks will be too thick and too heavy. So I just want to make sure my pencil is just barely touching the paper.
I'm going to go over this little bit with a mid-tone blue. And I'm just going to keep extending it downwards and again just using very light pressure. And I'll speed this up just a little bit again. going to gently tap in more bits of light with the mid-tone blue pencil. And I'm just going to adjust my colors. Now I'm taking my black pencil and I'm going to start penciling in some of the lashes that you see first being reflected onto the eye. So you see the silhouettes of the lashes being reflected on the eye. And then on top of that, I'll be penciling in the actual lashes. So right now, these are just reflections. I want to make sure my pencil is sharp for this. I don't want a really dull point because then my lines will be too thick. And I also want to make sure that my lashes are shorter towards the edges and longer towards the middle. And now using my gray pencil, I'm going to start penciling in some lashes. And it's very important to get the accurate direction that they're growing in. And horse lashes, you have this one layer that will grow in one direction and there'll be longer hairs. And then you have this other layer over top that might grow just slightly angled off in a separate direction and they'll be shorter. So it's very important to pay attention to the length of the hair as well as the direction they're growing in and they tend to get shorter as you get towards the inner corner of the eye also. And now I will layer lighter hairs on top.
and now these lashes are starting to angle off in a completely different direction. Now I'm using a lighter blue and quite honestly it's a little bit difficult to layer at this point. I should have perhaps skipped that light gray layer, just went perhaps from the dark gray to the blue right away. Sometimes you don't know it's going to happen this way until it actually happens. So my Carbothello white pencil is just not layering on at this point. It's just not going to go. giving up on it. The Caran Dash does work a little bit better, but it's still just a little bit difficult to layer at this point. And I'm adding in just those little bits, that second layer of lashes that sit on top of the first. So just tiny little hairs that are angled off in a completely separate direction from the bottom layer of lashes. And now with the light blue pencil, I'm just going to gently tap down on the pastel mat and I'm just adding little bits of sand and bits of light. Now, these are a detail that you can omit. As an artist, you can always use your own discretion and decide what you want to leave out and what you want to add into a painting. This is one of those things that you can choose to leave out. I just chose to add them in because they were in the reference and I figured it, it just would have been easier to add them in and explain what they were. And now I'm just adding little bits of highlight to the hairs. And now for the very final details, we're going to pencil in those little tiny whiskers. There's one up above the eye like that, and then there'll be a few just below the eye. So I'm penciling in a little bit of white just on the curvy bit. And now we're going to take a light blue pencil and we're going to pencil in the whiskers below the eye. And I'm just going to make bold, quick and confident motions. I want to have enough pressure so that I make a mark, but I don't want to have too much pressure so I end up making a line that's too thick. And some of the hairs are extending over the halter, and then others are going to be just really short, just like this one here. And just very fine lines. They're fine hairs, so you don't want them too thick. I made my line just a little bit too thick here, so I'm just going over with a black pencil and just making it finer. And 
and now I'm going to correct again with a light blue pencil just like that and that's it it's as simple as that If you're picking up too much pastel on your pencil as you're making your marks, just wipe um, the tip on a piece of paper towel. And here I'm just fixing my curve with a black pencil again. And I do want to make sure I have that curve to that top little hair there. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue. I don't want too much white. So I'm just correcting it with a bit of blue. Now we are done and here's our final painting. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions at all, please be sure to put them in the comments below. Somebody else might have the exact same question as you do. And remember that there are no stupid questions, so please don't be shy. If you are too shy, just send me a message and I will be very happy to help you. So thanks for watching and take care.